Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron on the Para-X Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, Mary, meet everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. My guest tonight, Scott Michaels, is long overdue. I mean, we haven't heard from him in a long time, so we're going to play catch-up tonight. And we're not going to talk about anything specific. I mean, I don't have any notes scribbled down or anything. Um, but there have been some changes with him personally, um, as far as deadly departedly. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. Um, just whatever. Um, and also, he's open to chat. So, I mean, open to chat. He is in the chat room. And if anybody has any questions or comments, you know, you can type them in there. You could send them to me. And if you're living, living, you're listening outside the chat room, come join us at paraxradionetwork.com and you can do the same thing. So, Scott, like I said, it's been way too long, both in person and um, here stirring the cauldron with me. Hmm. It has been. It's, it's been like two years, hasn't it, since since we've uh, we've spoken on your show? I think so. I mean, um, all right. So, because the last time I saw you in person, I mean, that's also um, a long time because you were um, dirty and smelly, and on your way <laughs> back home from a day at the range, and uh, <laughs> you haven't been on the show probably. It probably is a, a. I think it was a year or two, unless I, I looked it up and. I saw something from last year, but it might have been a, an encore show. But, you know, it, it's still, it's been a long time. And um, the interesting thing was when you sent over that Facebook thing yesterday saying that um, you got one of those memories popped up that said you were going to be on Stirring the Cauldron on December 8th. But that was back in 2011. Now, that was interesting because today is December 8th again. It is. It's our 11th anniversary since that episode. How how cool is that? I know. Did it kind of make you uncomfortable that that kind of synchronicity happened or what? No, because it's with you. I expect it. Oh, thanks. Okay. I take that as a compliment. I know it is. Um, <laughs> but um, all right. So, all right. I want to talk about, let's, let's fill people in um, about something I never thought you'd ever do. And that was leaving Hollywood and moving out to the desert. Um, but for those who might not know, back in time, Palm Springs in the whole area was the weekend getaway for the stars. And many had houses there. And um, so, actually, Scott, you're still in the thick of Hollywood history, aren't you? It is. It's funny when I, uh, I you know, go to the supermarket, I have to take uh, uh Dinosaur to Gene Aw Treat, <laughs> you know, it's like every all the, you know, but or I get my car washed on Frank Sinatra. All the streets are are named for uh, old celebrities, and in downtown Palm Springs, they have their own walk of stars, and yeah, so it's it is Hollywood, uh, Hollywood without the tall buildings and uh, with a little bit more sunshine. Uh, and a little bit more heat, a little bit more heat. <laughs> now, now, is it a little bit less crazy? than Hollywood? Yes, it's a lot less crazy. And, and I, I'm sort of I'm surprised by that. I was expecting things to be a little bit more, um, I don't know what the word would be. I don't want to uh, make a negative, more vibrant, really, or more you know active, because it is a sleepy place. You know, mm-hmm. The majority of the people live here are uh are older and uh not you know not tearing up the nightlife like like they used to <laughs> so uh but it's still you know it's still a tourist driven city yeah. and i love the feel of a tourist driven city because most everyone is here to be happy to have fun and uh and i like that and people come here to get away from the bustle of the city and and have a quiet life and it's certainly that here yeah, and that's what the stars did you know dating back to whoever i mean the 40s the 30s i mean palm springs because it's what two hours away from la you know i mean studios had that it was a two-hour rule that uh that that celebrities could not could not be within uh, over a two-hour uh destination back to los angeles uh 
contractually for their you know obligations so yeah then that's that was uh it would made this place popular uh people were coming out here because of the the springs you know the hot springs anyway and then bob hope and ming crosby came around and started buying up a lot of land and then you know then lucy came around and sinatra and so um so yeah it was a popular little getaway because, because people could get out and uh not really I hate the term not be bothered because it's part of the reason they became famous is they wanted to be bothered. They wanted the attention. So, but they, it was a little, a little less intense out here. And, uh, and it was their, their, their play place, their playground. Yeah. I mean, every time I've been there, it was just kind of like, Oh, I'm so comfortable here. You know, everything, there's nothing crazy going on. There's nothing loud going on. I mean, you know, you could walk around and, and it was really kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very low key, low stress, which is what I wanted after the last couple of years in Los Angeles. It's a little, <laughs> um, it's a little bit too active, you know, and uh, it is it's it's nice to to you know to be to be able to go to sleep and not hear helicopters and be able to listen to music and and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, no kidding. I mean that that's that's a giveaway right there. I mean, yeah. well, you know, and you left Hollywood and you left before the real madness of uh, madness. You know what I mean? When yeah, things yeah. became really, because LA is a very different place than it was when you lived there, and it's a very different place than it was three years ago when I lived there. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I'm still. It, it always surprises me that 35 miles away, it's so different. You know, because I mean, I lived there all my life. I mean, I was used to all the helicopters and everything going on, and I came out here. And the first night I was here, I took the dog out the backyard, and I looked up in the sky, and I saw stars. And it was quiet, and I got spooked. I really did. I mean, I was not used to that, being able to just walk in your backyard and look up, and it was really nice, and there was nothing that was like boogity-boogity or anything out there. And, and then by speak, you could speak in a sort of hushed tone because your voice does tend to carry when you're talking in a normal tone, you know. So uh-huh. It's funny. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, and, and you, because you, you were telling me, all, all the stuff that was going on in um, Hollywood, you know, after I moved out. And I'm like, scared the hell out of me. You know, I'm glad I kind of did. I mean, I feel bad. I miss it. But um, yeah, I miss, very much I miss so. things about it. Not that I miss it. Exactly. Well, that's but, the thing. You know, it was it's it, I moved to I moved to Hollywood because I loved it and I want to celebrate it. But uh, they started, you know, literally taking Hollywood away piece by piece and dump trucks and uh you know, so it is. It, it got even more sad because of that. You know, and they're like, um, whatever, demolishing the entire city block where the Viper Room is, and you know, that's like the heart of the Sunset Strip. So yeah, it's really nice to not be sad. It's mm-hmm. really nice. To be sad. Yeah. Well, and when I moved away, um, they took out the whole block across the street from me and turned it into a studio thing. So that would have been kind of weird too. But all right, so. Um, we were just talking about the history in Palm Springs, but a lot of the celebrities, famous people, are buried there, aren't they? Yeah. Well, down the street from me is uh, uh, I've been done a deep cemetery dive, but like Sonny Bono's over here, and Sinatra is here, and Busby Berkeley, and uh, and the John Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas, and Rock Hudson, and Dinah Shore, and Gavin uh, McLeod, and actually we're just in Palm Springs where. Um, uh, a little tiny cemetery where, uh, um, oh, now, now, oh, I can't believe it. I can't remember the name now. The guy that composed, that they did the, uh, Hugo, uh, Hugo, um, the guy that did the, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, the guy from the thing, you know. Yeah, I did it all the time. Montenegro, That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> Hugo Montenegro, who did the oh, good, yeah. bad, and the ugly, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. So, huh? um, the Clint Eastwood thing. So, yeah. And one of your your vlogs or podcasts or whatever, you went to what it's the Forest Lawn Cemetery out there, right? I mean, it was it was big and and all those beautiful mausoleums. Well, not in the mausoleums, but you know, all the people that were in the wall were kind of on the outside, and it was a really big place. I didn't know it. I didn't know that existed. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's 
yeah, for, uh, Cathedral City, more than Palm Springs, has become the has become the cemetery place. But yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's I guess you know it's it's like in Los Angeles, people want that address and that fancy crypt, <laughs> and they get a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it's really neat. Um, so, in order to get there, um, you not the cemetery, but to Palm Springs from you to Hollywood from there, um, you had to close up shop at the Dearly Departed Museum for a couple of reasons, I think. And then also the tours because of the pandemic, basically. Um, at some point, are you thinking about reviving either of them out in the desert, maybe, or something? Uh, certainly tours are not my priority in any way. I don't, I'm, I kind of, I, I, I sort of, when, when we were doing the tours, uh, you know, I always moaned on about it. How The tours, I love doing tours, but, um, you know, ten percent of what I did was doing tours, and ninety percent of managing a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah, and it was it was really complicated and and distressing and uh, kind of balancing a lot of different things. So um, I'm not in a rush to get back behind the wheel with another tour company. I mean, if someone came to me and said, "Here's here's money. Uh, mm-hmm. I will will pay write a tour and do a tour." You know, I might think about that, but I'm not I'm not in a rush to get back into that. And uh, but we did choose Palm Springs because we thought it might be a good place to uh, reopen our museum. When we closed our doors and we sold off our buses and uh, left Los Angeles, we put everything into storage. We haven't gotten rid of any any of our artifacts. In fact, we've gotten several more since um, Troy and I moved out here. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, we came here with the intention of opening our museum. Not sure. Um, I'm not sure how it's all going to play out. Not sure yet. But. Uh, but that was our intention. We chose it because people here know who Jane Mansfield was, whereas mm-hmm. you know, most other places they're like, who? But uh, mm-hmm. so that's why they love old Hollywood out here and they still do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you just mentioned Jane Mansfield. Um, you put the car in storage also, the death car. That's right. Yeah. Everything is everything is locked away. You must have a big storage unit there. <laughs> you had a tough for stuff. Bill. <laughs> I mean, <a> really, <laughs> <Certainly you know. laughs> but yeah, yeah. But surprisingly, I mean, the museum was was chock full of stuff, but most of it was uh, display cases. So once you know, one yeah. big display case actually went you know went into uh, a, a copy paper sized box because there was so much spread out in it. So it wasn't as uh, wasn't as uh, it's because no lying. I mean, we have a lot. We have, you know, concrete urns from Zsa Gabor's house and Jane's gates from the Mansfield house, which are, you know, 10 feet tall. And they're mm-hmm. wrought iron. And Perino's, the the pillar from outside Perino's. So that's that's significant. So, yeah, we have a lot of big stuff uh, in, in storage. But, uh, yeah, it's still George it's pretty, Burns yeah, door. George Burns door defines door. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The sofas, Elizabeth Montgomery's, you know, sitting, sitting, uh, her settee. And yeah, lots that stuff is all, all in there. <sighs> yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I remember, okay, we go back so far that I remember you had most of the things in your house. Yeah. Lots of I was, things. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was good because I, because I did a video really recently on the, on the different hauntings or, or, you know, you, you know, ghost stories uh, that I knew for Halloween. And, mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. I, how, you know, we used to go to those things and I was just, you know, sure, Marla, sure, Marla. And then we started going <laughs> to those things. And I realized that all those things that I collected all have you know, a lot of things attached to them. And it was important that we maintain them. But there was just, you know, as far as blessings and and uh, you know, holy water and the Florida water bit, all that stuff. We do care very a great great deal about that sort of thing. But there was just so much of it in such a small area that I think that um, it, it just was a bit too intense. So we mm-hmm. by removing from my uh, from my home and putting it in that shop, it was a good idea. And I still notice there are certain things that that uh, people a lot of people really nice people send me things um mm-hmm. as gifts that end up being you know put in the archives for the future and sometimes there'll be something that i'm like oh this one's got to go out in the shed and you know, out in the garage in a box because i just don't you know it, it, it's just a bit intense and i'm glad to have it and i'm grateful that people want to send it but i can't have it in the house because i know this is going to stir something up you know and also this mm-hmm. is all made american land out here and still is yeah so is. 
know, the Agua Caliente uh, people are, you know, all right around here. So it's all, you know, I, um, yeah, I try really hard to be respectful and, uh, and I don't want to piss anybody off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of amazing, you know, and, and especially when you talk about Native American stuff, some people get really freaked out about it. You know, I mean, you know, uh, all of a sudden maybe you're thinking, oh, is is my house on buried land, you know, or, or because they were careless. A lot of people were careless. They would buy off property and, and you know, build stuff over stuff that shouldn't have been built over and, and especially when it comes to Native American things because you hear these stories about – Revenge, you know, ghosts, you know, you're on my property, get off, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've, I've beaten that Benedict Canyon story into the ground, but, but yeah. I, you know, I firmly believe that that's all, you know, that's Native American, you know, area, and and I think it's cursed land, personally, but uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, you know, Palm Springs is, is it's, it's an interesting story because, they're, you know, of course, the people took a lot of the land away from the Native Americans and then they've made an agreement and, and it's set up in a checkerboard. Like every every like square mile or something like that is is Indian land, then, then it's American land and it's in a checkerboard pattern. It's really interesting. So a lot mm-hmm. of the communities have to pay rent to the Indian tribes that live on that area. It's it's very, very it's fascinating. It really is. Well, but, isn't uh, the casino in Palm Springs? Isn't it an um, Indian casino? Yeah, well, I have three Agua Caliente casinos within five miles of me. Oh, that's <laughs> so nice. yeah, yeah, three giant casinos are very close by. So it's in that regard, it's really cool because we you know go over to the casino and see a pretty good show, and just like the Hollywood Bowl used to be. I like that. Mhm. There was a, club, um, a nightclub in Palm Springs a long time ago that was really, really famous. And I think the building is still there, but that's where all the shows were put on and all the celebrities hung out. Does that ring a bell? There, there's a theater um, that's. Oh gosh, I'm still, still new out here. Where there, there was a, the, the, a lot of the women. And, that were in show business that, you know, the razzle dazzle ladies uh, would put on a show. And these, these ladies were in their seventies and, and, and above. And mm-hmm. these are getting together to put on shows again. And Carol Channing was always there and, you know, Kay Ballard. And, you know, they were all, <laughs> they were all regulars out here. They were the big wigs. I mean, you know, Bob Hope basically owned Palm Springs. Every time he, he did an appearance, um, you know, he always like on the tonight show was always trying to sell Palm Springs. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of them did come out here and they, and they would perform. Most of them are, most of them are gone now, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, it, a lot of clubs out here. Frank Sinatra is basically, you know, uh, he's almost Christ-like out here. Uh, <laughs> the way people refer to him, it's like Marilyn in Hollywood. You know, Marilyn haunts that, or Marilyn used to hang out there. Here it's Sinatra. Everywhere is Sinatra. I saw his house it's was a, up for sale. Did anybody ever buy it? Uh, the Bob Hope. Yeah. Sinatra. Sinatra's. Um. I think I think so. There's sort of a couple of them here, and the one where he built the helicopter pad for JFK and ended up not working out. Uh, that is called Twin Palms, and that's in Palm Desert. And I think that one is. Uh, it's hard. I don't know. I don't know. Things change hand. The Bob Hope House, which is a crazy huge toy yeah. shelf house up on the hill, that was purchased by somebody who wanted to make it into a, a venue. The Elvis Presley honeymoon home with Priscilla, which is a mid-century modern thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic. It's like a, a figure piece for for that sort of architecture uh, uh, recently changed hands. So there's, you know, things are moving and shaking out here. Um, but the mid-century modern stuff, they take very seriously out here. You know, it's all, all the oh, catch. Yeah. Uh, but people, people live it out here. You know, they wear the clothes all the time and you know, the, all the shops, like, they sell, you know, Lovey Howell, <laughs> you know, <bulbs laughs> type of clothing. It's really kind of, it's cool. It's kind of cool that that life, it is a lifestyle. It is. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and you, you're showing the lifestyle when you're doing your podcasts or vlogs or whatever you want to call them. Um, you did, like, one time go over to what, it was Dean Martin's house, right? Um, oh, that yeah. was abandoned or, you know, totally empty and you kind of. Gave a little tour from the in, well, from the outside in, kind of. 
Yeah, we had well because because since the business closed, my I you know I solely my my career is now doing YouTube videos, and uh, and and I, I quite enjoy that. And I've done a few around here. I've done one on uh, Jombie the Genie, who was uh, from Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure, or Pee Wee's Playhouse. I just did one on on him not that long ago. Uh, Joan Davis from I Married Joan. Yeah. Which was a, a wild story, and uh, and the Dean Martin thing. Oh, uh, the uh, cheetah, the chimp, who was living out here in, in a little, basically a guy's backyard, <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, like eighty years old or something. It's a fascinating story. But yeah, the Dean Martin one. Somebody told me that uh, that the house was empty, and I grabbed my camera and I walked around the place, and I just you know it was a video tour of it. And uh, funny enough, I was just looking at it. That that video got over two million views, which yeah. is just wild. So um, it's weird. I never thought I'd be, you know, the age I am and gone through the things that I've been through that that one day my entire job would be uh, basically I can carry it in one hand and not have to be anywhere in particular. Well, that's because you're so old that, that this is new to us. I mean, you know, back when you started doing anything, I mean, we didn't have cell phones hardly, um, much less, you know, doing vlogs and, and, and phones that had uh, cameras in them. And, and you can make a video from a camera. Ooh, I mean, yeah. from a phone. Yeah. Um, what did you have from all those old investigations we did, you know, back in, you know, 2002 or three or four, whenever it was that we were doing that so mm-hmm. much. Yeah. There would have been, there'd been something to have more sophisticated, uh, equipment yeah well as far as ghost hunting we didn't it, usually we didn't have much equipment we i mean we've kind of were doing the old geezer kind of way um the old school way you know um victoria you know we she told us where people were that we weren't seeing um <laughs> you know and and we just you know we had microphone um recorders and and just did what we did huh yeah, that was fun. It was a lot of fun. And actually, it was probably a lot more adventurous. And back, you know, I was saying to somebody really recently, it was before I think Ghost Adventures was on already. And but that was it. Ghost Adventures was like the first. And, you know, there was I mean, um, yeah, no, not Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, I apologize. And then every, you know, all of a sudden, every city has a paranormal society. And mm-hmm. every, you know, we I'm sure the Hollywood Wax Museum probably gets, you know, a request at least every week to be able to spend the night and investigate. Uh, so, you know, we were very fortunate that wasn't, uh, we were kind of at the beginning of all that before the world became inundated with the paranormal stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you know, now it's become much more mainstream and, uh, much more accepted nowadays. It's what it, there were no, you know, the Detroit paranormal society, the Chicago paranormal <laughs> society. It, uh, it's, and, it you know, like speaking, that. Speaking of the Wax Museum, sorry I cut you off. Um, you did a, a podcast, a blog. I, I, just give me the right name to call it, but you know what I mean. Um, you did all about wax figures because you had this this thing about wax figures forever and always. And, um, yeah, you missed a few from Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood Wax Museum that were so unrecognizable, like, I don't know if you remember this, but it was John Wayne, and he looked like a midget on a horse, and it didn't look anything like him. Yeah, that was half the fun of it, was trying to figure out who they were. Yeah, I mean, that was bad. I mean, you, I'm glad that you enclosed, or you enclosed, you put in the um, Last Supper thing, because that was like the creepiest thing of all, um, you know, when coins yeah. get flicked over Jesus's um, forehead and you know like divots it, well, that wasn't good um but yeah i mean tell everybody i mean what you were how many you have so many wax museums that you've been to and all that it was really yeah, interesting. Well, i've always been creeped out i always gravitated towards the things that creep me out the most and wax statues always always have and uh and so uh, yeah every every place we go to every city we go to if there's a hokey wax museum the hokier the better that's why I was sort of disappointed. The Hollywood Wax Museum on Hollywood Boulevard was one of those places where they, you know, they, they had the Last Supper, which was the all twelve apostles and and uh, and, and they're modeled in, in in wax, and they were disturbing because some of them were so very bad. 
and uh, and Leonardo DiCaprio was terrible, and Robin Williams. You're like, who? Oh, wait, okay, I can see that. Mm. I can see the out. It was, uh, it was, it was really, really unbearable. And <laughs> but in a good way. and then you know, a few doors down uh, later on, Madame Tussauds opened up, and of course, I, I. I'm of the mindset that it's no longer art like it used to be. If I'm wrong, I apologize to the to the artist, but I think most of it is, is sort of computer printed now. Mm. Uh, before they were out there with with actual measuring instruments, and people had to pose. and uh, And I'm sure there's an element of that too, but I'm sure it's mostly digital uh, nowadays. It's less of a uh, because they're so good, you know, they're so good, and there there's something to be said for just a little off, you know, they're they're. they're <laughs> straight or something and that's the charm of it trying to duplicate a person as opposed to what it just looks like a print because i know they have the same beyonce at the hollywood one madame tussauds as they do at the london madame tussauds as they do at every other madame tussauds it's always the same head same pose etc so and when when madame tussauds opened up in hollywood instead of going the kitsch route hollywood wax museum stayed with the or tried to match up to them in quality you know so they got rid of the last supper you know like one of the the the, the, the kookiest ones um remember we we had gravitated psychically victoria did towards the jude law statue and for some <laughs> unbeknownst reason in that room jude law is the one that's gone and uh so it's they, they've sort of taken away the, the 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 kookiest you know most haunted uh displays there and uh, replace them with more younger sexy people who i don't even know <laughs> you know you know uh, so that's that's time goes on i guess but uh but i will, well, I I, I will never pay back museum i would i would hope that they would have taken away the the horror things because it did bella lugosi no good um the weirdest yeah. thing <laughs> i mean it was just yeah but and you know what else bugs me when wax museums try to pass off wax statues that are actually just people in masks like, you know, Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. And, oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's just why why are we looking at that? I can buy that mask mm-hmm. and dress a dummy, too. You know, so the, the whole big elaborate display is based on Michael Myers and it's just, it's just a mask. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's kind of wax cheating, I think. It is. But, you know, cheaper than probably hiring somebody to do it right. Um, and the Buena Park Wax Museum, um, the, what was it called? Movie Land Wax Museum? Yeah, yeah. Okay, they had some real kind of weird ones, too. Maybe that's yeah. why they closed up so quickly. Well, it wasn't quick, but they were like the first ones to say sayonara, right? They were, yeah, they were actually really good. And celebrities would donate, they'd come for the unveilings and they, you know, Mae West went and, you know, gave her one of their own, her own gowns. And they actually, you know, for the most part, were really really good and uh, one of the people who i've met through my youtube travels is cynthia, cynthia lazaris who has a youtube channel called the weird and the wonderful and when uh when movie land wax museum went out of business they had a big auction of all the uh uh you know all the displays mm-hmm. and one of the particular my favorite display in there was uh fred mcmurray in the flying model t oh, from yeah. lover and I, I watched i was watching cynthia's you know, channel, and she has it in her house, hanging in her living room. Like mm-hmm. hanging from, they bought it, and and it's hanging in their living room. You know, right above the, the Lon Chaney and fan of the opera, and they have Linda Blair at the bottom of the stairs with the spinning head, and W. C. Fields and Abraham Lincoln, and then you go in the other room, and Marie Curie is there. You know, it's it's the most wonderful home ever, and she's the she's the sweetest person, but she's literally lives in a wax museum, and uh, and that and seeing that. Model T with the wheels spinning and fresh yeah. curry vine that warms my heart. I love it. I saw that. It was great. Um, and that's on your um, show. That, well, yeah, I, I did. It's, uh, my video was called I Live in a Wax Museum, but her channel is called The Weird and the Wonderful. Okay. And, well, uh, go people, go look at Scott's because it, it it's amazing in there. I mean, it was and, and it's all good stuff. It's not, you know, nothing junky, but that, yeah, the Fred is. Fred Astaire. The Fred McMurray thing was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And and how lucky you got to go in there and look around, huh? Oh, she I was really when I when I uh, when I found her video and I was looking it's like I told a friend of mine, I said, You can never mention this. Don't mention it to anybody until I reach out to her. So I was able to uh so she was able to, you know, I, she was really sweet. I just knew it was somebody I wanted to know. And mm-hmm. Cynthia 
have become friends. But uh, yeah, she's it's just her heart's in the right place, and she's welcome. Yeah. You know, she's welcoming and loves to show her her stuff and to people who are enthusiastic about it. And those people, you know, they're hard to come by anymore. You know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people are self motivated, and you have to be somewhat cautious in your life when you're letting people in. But but she was uh, so so forthcoming and so welcoming. It's just I was glad to meet a new have a new friend. Yeah, and a good one too. All right, we're going to take a quick break, everybody. So um, hang in, and uh, we'll be back in about two minutes. Cauldron will be right back, so don't go away. If you end up with web feed, remember, you've been warned. Throughout time, events have occurred that have shaped human history. Spirit voices from the past have many stories to tell, and for the past several years, Channelers Barry and Connie Strom have been conducting live channeling sessions and relaying those stories and messages from those on the other side. We invite you to tune in to Barry and Connie's new show, Channeling History, on the Para-X Radio Network, every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, as they relay the messages of those voices from the past, the ones who have witnessed history firsthand, and those who have made history themselves. There's a great new radio show on Para-X. Two hosts, one hour, and too much fun. Stephanie and Heidi not only talk about the latest goings-on in the supernatural worlds, they live it. They want to hear from you. They want to help you understand and guide you. And they want you to tune in. So... Grab a friend or come alone to gather around that metaphysical table with Heidi and Stephanie. If you're interested in the worlds of the unseen, tune in to The Gathering Radio Show, Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Para-X Radio. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening in to Story in the Cauldron. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up if you don't already know about the free weekly Witches Oracle deck readings that I post on my website every Monday. Now, let me answer the age-old question before you ask it, which is, well, how do I know it's for me? And the answer is pretty simple. If you weren't meant to see it, you wouldn't know it was there. So if you're curious about what the week has in store for you, pop on over to MarlaBrooks.com every Monday and scroll down on the homepage, and there it will be. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. And my guest tonight is Scott Michaels, dearly departed. And, well, no, he's not quite yet, but um, he's here with us. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that kind of was cute, wasn't it? Um, we're talking about all kinds of things, actually. And, you know, you were talking earlier about things that people send you. And I want to talk about the videos that you do called Unboxing which is um, something that you do every so often, and it's really interesting to see what opens the boxes or what's in them. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's literally like a grab bag. Um, you know, people are so kind, and, and, uh, and you know, people see things in their lives, and they say, Scott will love this. Or, yeah, it's something they'll have in their homes and say, well, I've, been, I've had this forever. Or, uh, what am I going to do with it? And they, they, they'll hear about me or see me and they'll go, Scott will like this. And it just the most interesting thing show up. And uh, luckily it's all been very positive. Uh, but yeah, you know, Hollywood costumes and, 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 and things that, uh, somebody sent me like some original Hotel Cecil stationery, you mm-hmm. know, when, when that, I mean, you we know, you know, Hotel Cecil is one of the most haunted yeah. locations. In uh, in uh, in America, I think it probably. Well, I don't know. It's 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 an intense place. In fact, yeah. In fact, I, since I saw you, I did that uh, adventure, uh, Ghost Adventures episode where I got to go through the uh, through the hotel, and mm-hmm. that, that was that was that was really really wild because we had free reign of the place, and uh, basically going into every room and every notorious room. 
And uh, because Richard Vermeer is a serial killer, lived there and an Austrian serial killer named you know, Pigeon Goldie and multiple suicides and multiple murders happened in the hotel. And, of course, infamously, Elisa Lamb, the young woman who was found uh, in the water tower on the roof. So that was a really intense experience. And uh, that was like the probably one of the one of the worst, I think, that uh, that I've experienced. But anyway, um so, but people, I say, are very, very kind and generous with with gifts, and they're fun to they're fun to open. Well, and the thing too is, they seem to know your likes, you know, and and so you're getting things that you're like, oh wow, you know, how do they know that? Or you know, I mean, aren't you surprised sometimes that they hit something right on the button that you really wanted or really knew about and stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, to to open up a an open up one box and there's like. Uh, Anne Bancroft's cocktail gown, you know, <laughs> and the next one is Betty White's stationery, and uh, it, it's just, yeah, it's 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 wild that people will um, be so kind, and I think they might get a get a kick out of seeing my reaction when I open them, and uh, I do a little, you know, ta da, da 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 kind of stuff, whatever I when I do it. I'm big on the royal family. I end up with with um, the last thing was a uh, teapot. From the golden, uh, the golden, um, oh my God, what is it? Jeez, what Centennial, oh, not so, wait a minute, I know what, what you're it? talking about. I lived it. The Jubilee, I, I mean, the Jubilee, yeah. no. Jubilee, and, uh, and yeah, so people, I think they, they know I like it. I get a lot of old tabloids, which I love going through. A lot of, uh, a lot of wild old movie star tabloids from the 60s and the 50s uh yeah so it's just it's a joy to open up a box and not know what's in there and be able to i think people really enjoy watching me uh, you know enjoy the things that they send it's fun it's a laugh it is and and tell everybody how to find those things when you're doing the live stuff how where do they go how do they do it well, the, if, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, which I think you could just get on YouTube and search for Scott Michaels, uh, I think I'll pop up pretty much uh, at the top of that list. And you go to my you go to my uh, YouTube page and you hit subscribe. And what I've come to realize that even if you subscribe, you don't get notified about my videos. You have to hit a little bell button that mm-hmm. uh, will that will notify you that I posted something new or I'm going to be going live. At, at some point, because every once in a while, I'll do like a 60 minute live chat, just just sort of quench, question and answer um, thing. I enjoy doing those, but it's sort of weird to do those because, you know, it's sort of like I'm going to go on at six o'clock and we're going to just talk. And I go, you know, it's like sort of me going, I'm very interesting. You should ask me something, you know, and it, I'm very, it makes me very uncomfortable. But it ends up being being a lot of fun uh, to interact with people. And of course, I've, I've still become sort of a a go-to person about the Manson uh, case, mm-hmm. and uh, that's been very interesting. And and one of the more recent videos I did, I've become friends with one of Manson's very, very close friends. Mm-hmm. And he was never a fan of Manson's. He wasn't a supporter of Manson's. He was literally a friend of Charles Manson's, and they were as personal friends. And it was fascinating to get that perspective on Manson and to uh, to know what his day to day life was like. And you know, yeah, he was a despicable person. There's nothing, not a whole lot I can tell you that I, I admire about the guy. But isn't it interesting to know that Charles Manson sat in prison listening to Aretha Franklin at Donna Summer? I mean, that, you know, <laughs> that makes him less the boogeyman and more of a well. That's really interesting. You know, it gives you a little bit of insight as to him as a person. So I, I, that's why I like kind of going into, uh, you know, with the people that I meet and I'm able to interview because I, I like to ask people the questions that, um, that that are not ordinary, but make that make the people that I'm talking about ordinary, if that makes any sense, something relatable, we'll say. Mm-hmm. I just like finding those little nuggets of information that uh, that make it, you know, something clicks in your head to make, you know, that just makes that person look, you look at them a little bit differently. So who alive is somebody that you would really, really, really like to talk to and meet? Oh, my gosh. Well, you, you know, you've eliminated most of them by saying a lot. Yeah, There's I know. <laughs> how many living people I want to meet. Well, we can but, fix uh, it so you can talk to the deceased ones, but the live ones are probably harder to get a hold of. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of funny, too. Since I've moved here, I've met more of the people that I really like. 
in Palm Springs, and I haven't a long time. Like about a year ago, they had an evening with Angie Dickinson, and it was a one-hour Q and A thing with her. And afterwards, we all lined up and got to chat with her for a bit. And I was like, that was really cool. I got to talk to Angie Dickinson about something I really wanted to know about Dean Martin. Then you know, there's another. There's a film I love called Rock and Roll High School. I was able to meet a couple of the stars from that. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I obtained Abigail Folger, the famous, you know, Helter Skelter, uh, uh, Tate LaBianca victim. She mm -hmm. was killed in the same night as Sharon Tate and the others. I obtained yeah. her high school yearbook and her high school yearbook. She went to school with it's a very exclusive Northern California girls school, Monterey. And um, and she one of her classmates of Abigail Folger was Sharon Glass from Cat mm. and Lake. And Sharon Glass very recently did a, a book signing and a little talk, and I brought her yearbook, and she, she was, you know, I said, would you sign your yearbook for me? And we <laughs> talked a little bit about Abigail Holter, who was her high school roommate, you know. So it is kind of neat to, to because here it's a lot less intense than it would be in Hollywood. If mm -hmm. you're going to uh, to meet a celebrity at a public event, which is what it is, basically, in L.A., you're inundated. Here, the, the community is a little bit uh, more, you know, less intense tense and people are more relaxed and you can actually have a little conversation with people. So I've been, uh, been lucky to be able to do that. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if somebody who's alive, I know that Troy would be able to say, well, you know, but off the top <laughs> of my head, I can't, um, I can't think of anybody that I would actually like to talk that would want to talk to me. That's the other thing. You know? oh, don't be like Tina Louise is still out there. Tina Louise is still banging around. For she is? Time. Really? I, yeah. Yeah. I, to talk to her, but she's not going to want to talk to me about what I want to talk about. So, um, <laughs> hey, well, just, yeah, but you know, yeah, so it's go ahead. No, I was just going to say that that people um, in Palm Springs are probably not as starstruck as people in L.A. or Hollywood, yeah. and it should be the other way around because. I mean, if you grow up there, I mean, I, I was just, you know, okay, there's there's Jesse White driving down the street. Oh, look, there's Alec Breck. You know, there's somebody in the market. We don't think about that, but I guess a lot of people do, and it's probably the same thing in Palm Springs. They're, it's just, you know, they're people. You know, you don't have to kiss their rings or anything. Seeing celebrities out in the wild has always been exciting. You know, when you're driving down, you know, in, in L.A. or you're at a store and you look over, it's like, oh, I know you. And uh, that happened mm -hmm. to me actually a couple of times where I was, uh, oh, that, you know, I just like Alice Ghostly when she came on my tour that one day. And I'm like, oh, I know you. You know, but but it's like <laughs> you don't, it doesn't, it doesn't really, you kind of forget it. You know, yeah. you don't write it down right away. I did one time. I sat down and I wrote a list of everyone I can remember meeting and talking to or seeing in public. And uh, and I keep thinking of things every day uh, that I that I had forgotten about. Um, but, yeah, it is fun. It is fun. Joanne Worley. That's somebody mm -hmm. I'd love to meet. I would love to sit down and talk to Joanne Worley. Oh, <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> <laughs> and she still walks. She's got that wig on her head and she still does that whole mm -hmm thing. <laughs> oh, my God. I, love I, that. I interviewed her for that um, Actors and Others for Animals, um, the celebrity fair one time. She and Ruth yeah. Buzzy were both there. And she, I, I mean, you could have been 50 yards away. And she was, she was just, Rah! you know, I mean, that whatever she does. <laughs> um, it was kind of amazing, you know, but she was a really nice woman. I did get to talk to her for a little while. But, yeah, it's... <laughs> Those old timers left from like laughing, which was a classic show. Uh, Ruth Buzzy recently, I got a, uh, uh, she told a story to me about, um, well, to Troy actually, about how um, uh, she and uh, Valerie Harper, Rhoda, were on vacation in Rio and they oh. were climbing up to that uh, giant statue of Christ. Mm hmm. They, uh, and they said, you know, they were going, it was a cloudy day, it was foggy, and they were climbing up the stairs to the big statue. And all of a sudden, the clouds lifted, and the fog lifted, and Rock Hudson was there with his boyfriend at the top of the hill. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that story. Those are, I love, those are magic stories. And uh, I just wish into... more, of them got to be, more of them got to be told, because uh, there are, I'm sure there's millions of them out there. Yeah, and you know, like you said, you hear things and then you forget about them. I mean, there there are things that you hear that you probably don't want to uh, talk about um, because, I mean, like when I was working with um, 
oh God, Bernie, Bernie Covell. And he was telling stories from the love boat. And he was just, um, not that we were going to write it because we were working on his autobiography. They weren't going to go in there, but he would mention somebody. And he would just rip them up, you know, because they were, they deserved it. I mean, it wasn't that he was being mean, but, you know, they were people that were, when they got on the set, they were unprofessional and they were needy and they were, you know, this and that. And, you know, you you just don't say things about it. But, you know, the only thing that really bugs me, um, when Kenny Kins- Kingston one time, we were up towards the Superman house, right, looking up there. Yeah. And he said, and I, I don't know if he's ever told he ever told you this, but he said he knew who killed um, George Reeves. But no, he, I didn't know that. But at that time, he said they're still alive, so I'm not going to say anything. And hmm. and I mean, you know, he was really good about not blabbing things that he shouldn't blab. But that was really frustrating because how many years and millions of years people are going? Okay, was it suicide or was it murder? You know, here's goes Superman. And, you know, but Kenny said he knew, and then I don't know if the guy died before Kenny or the other way around, but that would have been interesting to know. Do you know, Marla, I was thinking about our, our good friend Kenny, sweet spirit Kenny Kingston. God, he was great. Uh-huh. I was talking to uh, or messaging with uh, Valerie, his uh, his partner, assistant, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh I said, you know, I'd love to talk about Kenny. She goes, Scott, you know, I would love for you to do something on Kenny. There's not a lot of people I would trust to do something on Kenny. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I would love that. It would be so fun if you and I could get in the car and go over and see Valerie and, and talk about Kenny. And maybe she'd show us some of Kenny. Because I never got to go to Kenny's house. I never saw this. this oh, you didn't? The, 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 guy, the, re, the rejected women. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't sit on it, but I was there. <laughs> I mean, I was yeah. there a couple of times, and his house is beautiful. And I think, I think Valerie moved somewhere. So we have to oh, track her yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah it might not be the house. Proper that. I would pick you up. We could go, and we'd come back the same day. I'll drop you off and come home, and and I yeah. think that would be much fun to do. Yeah, no, I'm up for that. I like road trips. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> nice to get away. But yeah, I mean, so you know, but a lot of stuff should not be told. You know, because it, it's hurtful, not for maybe the people that have died, they don't care anymore, but their families. And a lot of people, you know, say things that are just horrific, horrific, horrific. I mean, most most people know stories anyway. It's not a big deal. But, um, you know, I, I was just really surprised because I tried to wheedle that out of Kenny. I really did. I, I mean, batting my eyelashes didn't work, but... You know, he he just he got really serious and he said, no, no, that person is still alive. And it may I don't know why, but he, I, would struggle, yeah. I would struggle with that. Because you're, that you, wouldn't you? I personally might feel an obligation to say something to somebody um, out of the out of respect for the dead person. I get. Yeah, I, I would think so. But it was it was just kind of like I, I it was nice. You know, it's like a doctor, the patient doctor confidential at confidentiality there's a good word yeah um but yeah i mean he i mean he he knew stuff i would definitely have had to have that conversation not had to it sounds like i'm scolding but i would definitely have had that conversation with kenny and you know hitting hitting back a tiny bit saying why not you know uh yeah very curious the reasoning yeah yeah it's just you know it's interesting that the people that we run into or work with or get to know um it's fun i mean a lot of it is fun people say well oh my god you you were there you did that you knew this one i mean yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) we're lucky there's somebody i'd like to meet but i want to know him you know know, it's like i just want to go oh you're you and i love you can i have a picture with you i just want to hug you but uh but it it goes you just don't want to know them because you don't want to start knowing bad things or i don't know there's (laughs) i like like their persona i like who i know of them and i know they're deeper than that and i don't really need to go there (laughs) i like i like what i like (laughs) well that's it i mean it's like people who who see celebrities and and are very disappointed when they actually meet them somewhere because that person is probably rude or, you know, having a bad day or something. And, and it just breaks the whole thing for everybody. Yeah. You know, they Sometimes they don't always walk around with their, their actor face or whatever they are. 
Um, and it, it's just kind of interesting. I mean, I've been really lucky. I've really been lucky because I've never had to interview anybody that was a jackass. And even though people were saying, oh, you're going to do an interview with that person. Oh, no, 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 don't. You've got to be really careful about that guy. And I never had a problem. And, yeah, I've had a couple of negative experiences with people. But nothing that really – well, no, the only one that was consistently – I had a couple was was Billy Zane. He was a jerk, uh, a few, like at least twice to me, and, uh, and I, you know, just deeply unpleasant. Uh, you know, and that's surprising because when I met him, he was in the capacity to meet people. But he was just like no patience for me. And the question I asked about somebody I knew who knew him and he's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? But it's happened a couple of times. So, um, so yeah, but no, but no, 90% of the time uh, when you meet, when I meet people, you know, I'll just say, hi, I really like you. And they go, oh, thank you. And they smile and wave because they, they don't want to talk to me, I'm sure. But they're very, very polite. They're very, you know, that's why they're in the business. Um, but yeah, some people would just stand out as being not very nice and, and, but, but, for the most part, it's not been a problem. Have you had one embarrassing uh, situation when you met something? <laughs> I've had plenty. <laughs> oh, let's hear. I want to hear a couple. Well, I mean, most of the time, most of the ones that um, that uh, happened was when I was uh, living in England. And, um, and as you know, my ex used to have a talk show in England. And, uh, and I got to meet a lot of people that way. Mm-hmm. And we'd, we'd be in the green room in the back, you know, which is where like, sort of the waiting room when people go on. Uh, they sit back there and they until they go on and then they come back to the green room when the next guest is on, et cetera. And it was always very boozy and, and a lot of fun. But then sometimes, you know, it got it got a little, you know, out of hand. And I pissed people off. I pissed off uh, Molly Ringwald big time. And uh, and B. Arthur was uh, was angry with me quite a bit. Um, I could see but, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I was asking her the stuff I wanted to know because she was yeah. good friends with Charles Pierce, who was the female impersonator, like sort of one of the first biggest female impersonators there were. And uh, and I asked about uh, the funeral and how I read in the tabloid that they, that you know she was she would con- try to contact his spirit. Actually, it's appropriate that this come up today, and uh, and she got really defensive with me and and dismissive and wow. yeah, that was. I guess it was too personal, but it was an article in a national paper, so I figured it was fair game, you know. Sure, yeah. Uh, I've always heard that I wanted to know about. So um, a lot of times I will ask people things like that. Uh, but uh, embarrassing, you know, yeah, there were there was there was a couple that um, there, there was more, like I say, more. There was one British celebrity by the name of Barbara Windsor, who I love, 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 love. She was uh, and she was friends with these gangster t- twins by the name of the Cray Brothers. And uh got to talking to her about it and it was just really ugly and I wouldn't stop talking about it. And then, so I really like them, but, but I don't want to meet them cause they're in prison, but I don't mean you can get me in, but I don't mean that, you know, I just, she just turned and walked. <laughs> it was just turn and walked away. And it was like, it was only her and I in the room at that point. And um, yeah, that was so embarrassing. So yeah, there are, there are a few really cringy, cringy moments. Um, but yeah, yeah. Are they, t- well, that one time I, no, never mind. Yeah. Come on, come on, <laughs> spit it out. Yeah, that was uh, it was just it was it's personal way it was just something it was yeah i had um i had how did i say what do you I, <laughs> I can't even believe i brought this up <laughs> it was it was it was chewbacca uh, uh um what's his face Prouse, david Prouse, i think his name was chewbacca and we were but it was this very posh radio show that he was on, and it was a long night before, and I wasn't feeling good, and my stomach was actually feeling a little funny, and I was I had to go to the other side of the room because I didn't want to disturb anybody else, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then they started talking about me, and I was right there, and it's like, oh my god, I'm so mortified, I got to go back over there, and I went back over there, and my unpleasantness sort of followed me and just slowly oh, enveloped. <laughs> look at me and it's like oh that was that was ugly that was horrible and i was humiliated and they all knew but thankfully it was britain so they pretended like it didn't happen <laughs> oh yeah the politeness yes of course <laughs> you're lucky if somebody if it was here they probably would have punched you or something oh, God, no that was so that was so embarrassing so there have been a few you know subtle sort of things that have been <laughs> or called i asked um Oh, Grace Jones got very angry with me, and she she yelled at me too uh, for bringing up a, a rumor about her and um, about yeah about the way her birth, and uh, she didn't mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, 
he yelled at me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes we have to be careful. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's good. But when the booze is flowing, so do the words. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. No, see, see, I got something out of you that you didn't want to say. Hey, that's. Do I get a brownie point for this or what? <laughs> and I'm only drinking my tab. I'm not even having any alcohol. <laughs> uh huh. This is good, and and you know, thousands of people are going to listen to this recording and hear that too. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> That was his name. Peter Mayhew was was Chewbacca's I, name. Yeah, 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 yeah. He died not too long ago. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to have to go. This, this is terrible because as long as you know, I was on a roll getting something out of you. I was going to try again, but um, time is not <laughs> on my side. But we'll we'll do it another time and and don't make it another two years or whatever. I mean, yeah, this is, this is not. I definitely enjoyed chatting with you, and and if I um yeah if I can come up with a, a good story uh to uh to try to uh, convince you to let me on again, I'll I'll, I'll reach out. But I hope, I really hope we do pursue the Kenny Kingston thing. I would yeah. uh, I would love to do uh, something on Kenny. He's he was always yeah. so good to me. And, yeah, uh, such a such a kind man. I know. And um, I could what, bring what? May West teeth. With, I could bring May West teeth with us, and maybe Kenny will come through May's teeth. Oh my God, that, that sounded bad. <laughs> well, it's, at least you don't have a jawbone. If it started to talk, that would, yeah. Anyway, um, where can people find you? Um, where, once again, uh, the Dearly Departed has a YouTube channel, also, right? Yeah, Dearly Departed Tours is where I am uh, on YouTube. I'm, of course, I'm Facebook, but, but Dearly Departed YouTube is Dearly Departed Tours on YouTube, or you can look up Scott Michaels, is where I spend my time, and that's where I do my work and any kind of. You know, if you guys come and visit, we appreciate it. You know, watch a couple of videos. That'd be great. Sit through an ad. That'd be great. And uh, make a comment, you know, and, you know, maybe join join up the little community and we can chat. It'd be nice. That would be. All right. Um, thank you again for coming on. And again, you will be there maybe, you know, sooner than you expect. You never know. And I want to thank everybody for listening in, too. we got a good, full, nice chat room today, and everybody's, like, waving at you and, and whatever. And so... Thank you for listening. And until next time, everybody, blessed be, and merry meet again. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more Cauldron Stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2024. The Mysterioso March by Kevin MacLeod is licensed through Incompetech.com. Thank you.